Hello and welcome to a video on the flaws of apportionment methods. In this video we're going to look at the Alabama paradox, the population paradox, New States paradox, and the Balinisky, Balinisky and Young impossibility theorem. So the Alabama paradox, what it says is an increase in the total number of items to be apportioned results in the loss of an item for a group. So basically it's like when a uh, when the population of of a state gets big enough to where we're going to give a, a new uh, we're going to give a new district or something, so we'll get another seat in Congress. Uh, so that apportionment when we retally the numbers, another state ends up giving up a seat to uh, to, to make the, the numbers work out. So that state, you know, before everything that state may have had 10 seats and then after everything happened that state only has nine or something similar to that so that's the Alabama paradox so uh, an increase in the total number of items to be apportioned results in a loss for one of the particular groups all right so we're going to look at the Alabama paradox and how how that actually happens so a small country with a population of 10,000 is composed of three states a b and c so according to the uh, country's constitution, the Congress will have 200 total seats. All right, so we got the table down below, and we're going to use Hamilton's method to show the Alabama paradox occurs if we increase the number of seats to 201. So if the population gets up high enough to justify another seat, somebody, one of these uh, first three states, loses a seat. So Remember when we're using Hamilton's method, the first thing we need to do is find that standard divisor. All right, so we take the 10,000 divided by the 200 seats that are available. That gives us 50. That's our standard divisor. So we're going to take all of those original A, B, and C's populations, and we're going to divide them by 50. And that's the standard quota. And remember the quota law says that we should be within rounding down or rounding up. The standard quota, the lower quota, the upper quota. So 100 to 101 for, for A, 90 to 91 for B, and 9 or 10 for C. Okay, so we get the lower quota, then we see that uh, uh, group C has the biggest decimal, so they get the extra, the surplus seat. So that's the way we break down those 200 seats, is 100, 90, and 10 in this last column over here on the bottom right. So what happens if we allocate 201 seats? Well, that changes the divisor a little bit to 49.75, roughly. So if we divide those three populations now by 49.75, we end up with the uh, 100.8 having the biggest decimal part. And because they only add up, the lower quotas only add up to 199, we have two seats to give up. So A and B this time both end up with uh, the, de the bigger decimal parts. And so they get that surplus seats. And so we end up with 101, 91, and 9 rather than 201. So before we had 200, uh, and now we have 201. And notice C had um, 9 seats in, in the new apportionment when it had 10 seats before. B and A both had 90 and 100 respectively. And now they have 91 and 101. So they both gained a seat. But C loses a seat. So it's basically like A or B gained the extra seat, and then C lost the seat to A or B when nothing else happened. You know, there's nothing else happened other than just the division, and it produced, <coughs> excuse me, it produced different decimals because of the way that the division happened to work out. All right. Um, the population paradox. So one group loses items to another group, even though the uh, first group grew faster than the second group. So when uh, you know when the population grows high enough, that's when we allocate a new seat. We give a new seat in Congress when a when a state gets big enough to to justify a new seat. And a lot of times that's when these paradoxes pop in place. And it, when they happen, they have happened before. The name Alabama paradox happened. Uh, is given that name because it happened to Alabama. Um, but population paradox, it's actually like the growth rate 
uh, I've heard it called that, the growth rate paradox. So you lose an item even though you grew faster in the same time period. So if we give an example of this, so we're given a, a population of 10,000 people, all right, A, B, and C again. And we see that A grew from 540 to 560, B grew from 2430 to 2550, C grew from 7030 to 7890 over the same time period. All right. So the first thing we want to do here in part A is find the percent increase of each population. And that uh, that's a calculation we've done before where we just take the change in between uh, the, the old and the new. So like here for A, we've got 560 minus 540. That's 20. And then we divide it by the original. We divide it by the 540. And then we multiply that by 100 to get it into a percent. And that's the percent increase. So it increased by about 3.7%. Now we can do that for all three states, A, B, and C. And we see that we have the biggest, the, the state that grew the fastest was C. So C is growing faster. Well, let's look at the apportionment, how, how we divvy up everything. So the new populations that we have right now went from or, or sorry the originals um, we've got 11 seats allocated so we've got a thousand our standard divisor so we take these numbers divide by a thousand so the lower quota a b and c a gets no seats b gets two and c gets seven all right so the remember with the hamilton method we use the decimal part and just give uh, the the uh, seats to the, um, the the biggest decimal, so 0 0.56 and 0.89, get it. So 1, 2, and 8, all right? So our final apportionment is 1, 2, and 8 for states A, B, and C. All right, now, if we look at the original apportionment, 0, 3, and 8, and then look at the... Uh, new apportionment which was one two and eight a which if you remember grew the slowest of all these 3.7 b grew a little bit faster than a um b basically lost the seat to a and nothing changed uh, that they still have 11 total seats but over that time period uh, b lost its seat to a even though it grew faster in that same time period. So uh, that's the population paradox. Even though one state over the same time period grew faster than the other one, it still ends up losing a seat. All right, new state paradox. This could happen if, you know, you don't think of it just um, with, uh, you know, states like in the Union, like the United States, because... Um, it's it's probably going to be rare for there to be a new state anymore but you know that could also be like in high schools if we're going to like um, make a, a new high school in a district and that's the example we have here but the new states paradox is the addition of a new group changes the apportionment of other groups so we had a high school district that had just east and west a very small county maybe and there's only these two high schools initially and most of the kids, by a vast majority, went to West High than East High. So they have 48 counselors that they have to divvy out based on the population. And as we see here, they gave 40 to West and 8 to East, okay, because West was so much bigger. Okay, but now a new school is going to come along North. The county grows enough to where they need a, another high school North in the district. And that uh, we're going to have to have more uh, counselors, okay? So there's 1,448 more students, and we're going to use the standard advisor of 200. The new district hires seven new counselors, okay, based on that. All right, not all for this school, but just sort of going to hire seven more and then divvy them out based on the uh, Hamilton method of apportionment. So this is how what's going to happen. Our new standard divisor from 200 is now 200.87. And when we divide by 200.87 and go to the lower quotas, 
there's only we're only off by one we have to have 55 we're only off by one so the biggest decimal part goes to east all right so we end up with 9 39 and 7 all right and it was 40 and 8 so 7 went to north you can say that's the new 7 that they hired well look what happened with the other two west lost one to east even though their populations are the same thing that they were before 7912 and 1688 right 1688 gave east 8 and west uh, 40 before and now 7912 and 1688 gives them 39 and 9 so the new state in this case it's not a new state it's a new uh, high school uh, reapportioned the uh, pre-existing values even though nothing changed with the, within those values all right, so that's the new states paradox. Something new that wasn't there at all before um, causes the things to change. All right, and then just like in the last video, we saw that there is no perfect way to do this. There's always going to be these paradoxes, and it's mathematically impossible to to get rid of them. That's the same thing here with the proportion apportionment methods. There's just not a good perfect one. Something's going to violate uh, one of the quota rules. Or, or sorry, uh, any apportionment method that doesn't violate a quota rule will have a paradox and vice versa. If it doesn't violate a paradox, then it has to violate the quota rule. If you remember, the quota rule says that when we compute our standard quota, like this middle column here, the 0 0.844, 39.56, we have to be within one uh, whole number up or down of those two things. So 8 or 9, 39 or 40. All right, that's the quota rule. And so what this is saying is if we don't, if we eliminate the paradoxes, we violate the quota rule. If we don't uh, violate the quota rule, then we will have these paradoxes. So it's just one or the other. You're going to have some kind of trade-off that you have to have. But most of the time you would rather uh, be, you know, not violate the quota rule uh, to be fair. But if you're, uh, if you don't violate the quota rule, if you want to be fair on that end, you're going to have these weird things that happen. But the good thing is they're rare. They don't happen often, but they do pop up from time to time.